से साधु 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 so dear dharma practitioners as you know this our human body 70% water so the water is very important for all of us and without water we cannot survive and even it says kind of like this life from the beginning of this world this life will start from the water so don't there no one going to argue about that and we all appreciate we all respect and we all need the water so then just think of yourself so the water is very important and where it is very precious and we all need it then how about if somebody take you and put you in the middle of pacific ocean because it's water it's very important and maybe you don't like pacific ocean how about then the the person take you and put you in the middle of the gulf ocean or the uh, arctic ocean or the indian ocean you're not going to like it even though we we need water that doesn't mean we're going to be just only only with the water even though we came from water even though 70% in our body is water we are kind of uh, we are kind of living beings that base with land so keep that same principle with your mind also and when when you look at the world this world is like water all the the perception related to i ear nose tongue body mind is like the ocean and we be, we came out of that our life begin from that not from beyond it and we depending from it we need it but that doesn't mean you just you just can be only with that same like you are land based living beings your awareness your consciousness your mind cannot survive with only the perception or this outside colorful world you going you going to be crazy your mind cannot your mind cannot handle it but the peace happiness or the success or your development that everything going to be there with you when you have a moment separate from the perception or the world the ocean or the all this object related to eye ear nose tongue body and mind is like the land for you that is where you can be survive that is where you going to be safe that is where you feel so comfortable even though you jump to water maybe 20 after 20 minute your no body not going to handle it in in a healthy way the mostly 20 minute good then after 20 minute if you are very well trained person maybe you can go for a one hour you can stay and then after that what will happen the body start to react in different way so same like nothing wrong with that what you see hear smell taste or feel associate or think 
But remember, if you don't recognize the limit or if you don't recognize your land, resting period, moving away from that, finding little time to be alone yourself, and your deeper, your mechanism, this is the physical, mental mechanism going to be reacting in a different way. So understanding this method is kind of like the bridge. So that's why Dharma is like a bridge. It's giving you the wisdom. Dharma is the bridge that build up from land to water. And then you can, anytime, you can go through it and you can stay away from it whenever you need, whenever necessary. So then you have to see, do you having that bridge inside you? Do you build up that bridge inside you with the desires and in between your satisfaction, your harmony, your peace, your tranquility state? Or are you just struggling with only the water? So in day-to-day -day life, that struggle itself will take us to difficulty. And sometimes will the, with the current will take us away from land sometimes and even we cannot, we cannot find the way to even just for having a, have a, have a little rest. So then yourself, you have to see for that what, what you, where you need to start. It like this, there was in a university in a psychology faculty, they had a test. So it was kind of like a students, they're going to have a final test. And that day the professor came and then they gave a paper. And then the, the it's everything covered and they thought this is the question paper. And the paste down, they didn't see anything. And then once hand over to everyone, the professor told, okay, turn it. And they, everybody turned the page, the page. And then they saw just in a, in a blank sheet, in the middle of that, just little tiny black dot. It's like this. You know, I make it a little bit uh, bigger because then you can see it. So then everybody, then the, the teacher told, the professor told, okay, write what you see. So that was the question. That was the, the paper for them, for their final test and say, told, okay, just write what you see. And everybody, two hours, Everybody start to explain this little tiny black dot. So then after two hours, professor took all the papers and start to read all the answers regarding this. What is this black dot in the middle of white paper? What he tried to say? And then the teacher told, this is what the very nature of the world. And we all try to see, and when the, the professor told, write about what you see. So that was the question. Write the, uh, about what you see. And they all forget all this white space. 
and they just only focus, they only saw this little tiny dot. So the same thing with us in day-to-day -day life, we all look for happiness, satisfaction, success, development, tranquility state. But when it comes to our very experience, we always see these tiny dots, black dots, with each and everything around us, even regarding people, situations, and what happened to us, even regarding our past or the future, we never see the surface level, the, the, the white, the background, how big it is, how strong it is, how beautiful it is, how much space it has. We don't see, we don't calculate, we don't appreciate. Why? Because we are so caught up with our intellectual, intellectual knowledge, thinking I know better than you, or oh, I know this much, that much like that. We always analyzing tiny, 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 tiny dots. And we miss all the beautiful opportunities in our life. So then remember yourself, when it comes to your life, you have to develop a skill. So whatever things come to you as perception, as situations, always see the, the background and the, the surface level and see the beauty behind it. So it, it, it's just a moment of experience. And there is a way that you can transform to things, but mostly our mental pattern, the way we think, sometimes not allow us to, to understand it. There was a person driving and he was so hurry. And it was at the same time, it was traffic. And uh, so he's driving and then suddenly this little car came from nowhere and put in front of him and block him. And he got so mad and he was so hurry go to office in this, this traffic jam and then this little car came just no, and then somehow on the way, he got so mad, he go, go behind this car and horn, knocking horns, you no? Know? And uh, so somehow in this, he came to a point to see who is in that car. So then then that car, that little car, one woman and bring the shutters down and then apologize and told my baby, I go into emergency. My baby, my child behind my car. So I need to take. So if you got disturbed, I'm very sorry. So by hearing that, this person got shocked. And at the same time, and he, he understood himself, what the, the mental picture that he carried and how difficult was for him, his own mental image. See, it was, he thought maybe somebody, some young man or young girl try to, you know, make fun or maybe don't care about people or kind of like that. He, he had many, many thoughts. 
and at the same time you know all the the logic and theories all the dharma and everything came to him to to prove how he is right that's how who we are so you know see sometimes there there is a group call sometime uh, what it call this uh, flat earth society you know they believe the <laughs> this earth is still flat flat earth there is a flat earth society and uh, if you go to their their websites their you know youtube pages their facebook pages and sometimes they they try to say things to prove and how right they are you know so, so it's it's like that so when something come to us we the same and sometimes we we talk about meditation and we sometimes the when it come to ordinary life it's nothing to do with meditation you have to really apply your your common sense and at the same time you have to you practice you have to be practical in day to day life certain situations you cannot bring your meditation theories to that and try to use it you know it's it's like uh, when you try to teach for a child to walk you can bring many theories but what the child need to do you know child somehow the child need to come and start to walk it is it is okay to fall down it can every moment that fell you know falling down is becoming a milestone for the success not for the failures you know that's all the times you know like as children when we you know try to ride bicycles you know how many times we fell down but finally once you start to get into that once you start to find the balance and go 10 feet 20 feet it's bring you the the completion of the effort so in day to day life you have to remember that what we see around us and sometimes if we don't don't recognize it very clearly and we just only caught up in our mind and that going to become very difficult because the mind always it says mind bring all the information to tell oh you are right you are right you are right but when it when it come to reality you have to remember that the with the with the world outside and within ourselves you need the wisdom to build up the bridge to keep the the communication and keep the connection and if you if you don't understand it the life itself going to become a struggle so that's why this all the teachings try to help us to bring that wisdom so there's nothing that nothing you need to reject it's nothing you need to to hold so there's nothing to nothing to resist and nothing to hold each and everything is a part of the world but when it come to when it come to in front of you rather than pointing out to things can you can you take that whole picture as one that is a one of the the profitable skill you gain out of the the meditation you take everything as one so that's how how when we go to the vipassana level observation you know in the beginning you observe inhalation exhalation tranquility state of meditation 
and just the inhalation exhalation become a, you know your primary mental object but when it go to vipassana level you recognize and Anal you analyze oh even though i recognize this inhalation exhalation it is a bodily action so the body behave and according to the body function so the inhalation exhalation happen and then then how your body exists like this because all of your body your mind according to the condition of your mind the behavior of the body going to change and the behavior of the breathing going to change and what is the mind mean it is not a, 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 that the unchangeable solid entity that you can find out cutting the pieces and uh, breaking everything and then find out okay this is the mind you cannot find out something like that it is a result of this all so then you are you are a result of this everything and when something happen how then you can you can point out to us something this is wrong because you experience something as right as a result of it is wrong so then what you what you experience as right is right is the the part of the wrong so how about when you does when you start to look that whole situation as one like the when you take a coin head and tail you can you cannot separate it even though two sides is the same one coin so like this the world the same so then you need come to yourself as maybe you know you cannot do it overnight but little by little you have to come to a point in day to day life it, with your personal experience not to not to resist and accept things as a part of your life and not to keep keep following or holding or grasping things and let it be there as a part of your life and then it then you will see it's it's just not it is just not that uh, taking things or struggling to go away from things is the life and then you understand there is something beyond and as we all knows for a happy life we say you have to practice generosity don't know from where that this this knowledge came you know everybody knows that everybody knows holding grasping clinging you know never going to take you to happy ending but still when it come to our own personal life what we struggle in eons by eons your ancestors to generations to generations you know we had this knowledge don't hold it to things don't grasping things don't harbor to things you know don't have the last regarding anything so like that we 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 know your ancestors knew your blood your dna heard it eons by eons like chanting but when it come to our day to day activities we are fail to to practice it within ourselves even within very simple things so the, why this happen like that the very reason is this so then from today remember start with you you and never try to point out and separate things like this and start to see the whole picture as one that is where you gain the skill rather than grasping holding clinging and at the same time rather than resisting 
arguing, fighting, there is a way you can take this everything as a one and everything giving the same picture. So when you are able to develop it as a mental quality, so like your whole body, you take it as one. When you cook, you use your whole body as one. When you sleep, you, you, you use your whole body as one. When you watch TV, when you do something, you use your whole body as one. When you hold the pen, you use your whole body as one. And even that even when you want to think, just imagine, there are many, many people use this kind of techniques. Just you, you visualize yourself, your entire brain cells, nerve system start to function to 100% fully and focus towards that whatever the field you want to. So like that, that, that that's mean you, at least you, you come to a, a moment to understand you that you you become one so in day to day life you start to practice yourself with physically start with physically don't don't separate things separate and then that things it's good for understanding to good practice and to learn it is a method to practice point of view that we take that but when it come to finally when it comes to life, you have to accept everything as a part of life. So when the day comes for you to, to not to separate the, the land from the sky and land from the wind, that the sun from the wind, the cloud, if you're not going to separate from the land and the, the landscape, when you able to take this everything as one, you say, oh, this is a beautiful day. How you say it? Why you say? Because you take that everything as one. That's why you say it. But when it come to you, you know, deeper, deeper in your consciousness, Use the same same principle, the same simple principle method. When things go, when things difficult, when things become bad, sad, hard, you know, just take it. It's a part of life. And that way you will see the moment by moment, moment by moment, your mind start to come to a point to absorb and hold and become strong. And then rather than changing according to this outside, the mind start to, to become neutral in that neutral level. Your awareness going to become more and more and more stronger. That is the beginning of undisturbed mind. When you have that undisturbed mind, though you start to recognize this worldly nature and beautifully, and this worldly nature you recognize with equanimity, and that is where your response not going to become resisting or grasping according to that whatever the perception. So when you come to that moment, that is where deeply you're going to recognize that your tranquility state and the joy, the happiness and the beauty of this human mind and beauty of this practice. So it is possible. And then in day-to-day -day life, as you usually say, how beautiful day it is. Remember, look into inside you and include that inside experience also to that outside experience and then that is where your completion going to happen so with that i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you 
May you also have the patience, courage, understanding, and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life. During this time period, may everyone stay healthy and safe. And finally, may all of you attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sabbitiyo vajjantu sabbaro govinasatu mate bhavatvantarayo sukhidi gayuko bhava ittavata cha ammi sampadam punya sampadam sabbhi deva numodantu sabba sampatti siddhya sabbhi bhuta numodantu sabba sampatti siddhya sabbhi sapta numodantu sabba sampatti siddhya idam me punya kammanna savakkaya vahannotu sabba dukkha pamuntu bless